If you know, you know. Ah, hey everyone. How we doing? Everyone wants to watch this, eh? GDC recap. I wonder how many viewers we have for this now. 42. Not bad, not bad. Um, yeah. Shit's uh, been a bit wild recently. We, um, you'll, you're about to hear all about it, but for those who don't know, uh, I was, I spent the week in San Francisco going to uh, the Game Developers Conference down there, GDC, because uh, my game Ram was nominated for an Independent Games Festival award. And uh, it won, <laughs> just not the award it was nominated for. Um, and oh shit, okay, 20 bucks already. Thank you, JMH. Thank you very much. Congrats on the win. I, I appreciate that. We're, we're getting a lot of congratulations on the win. Uh, I'll get Toby in the call here uh, before we get too distracted, because there's a lot to talk about, and I... I could ramble on indefinitely without getting anywhere here. Um, okay. Toby? Hello, hello. Okay. Uh, this is real. We're doing this. Um, can you can you give a speech, Toby, quick, so the stream can tell us how your audio is compared to mine? I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. We uh, <laughs> We had a crazy week. Really excited to talk about it. Um, and make up for a bit of our, our stumbling speech because we missed out a lot of thank yous, but uh, I'm sure we'll get through it all. But yeah, hopefully the audio is good. Yeah, I think it should be good, actually. Awesome. Um, okay, so essentially the idea we had for today's stream was it's going to be short. We're not going to spend too long um, like because we're still kind of recovering from the whole trip. We're just going to talk through it. I'm going to play RAM in the background, and we're going to do our best to break down the, event, the events of the... Um, very almost comically eventful San Francisco trip. So uh, I'll get the game yeah. going here and you can have we, some. We like, took subways. a list. We were basically dead in the, we stayed at a hostel when we were in San Francisco because for the two of us to stay for the week, it was the same price as one night in a hotel room. So mm -hmm. we were basically brain dead the last day after the, the third day of the expo floor. And we took notes on all the different days. So I'm sure we missed a few things, but we have a lot of stuff to cover. Um, so I'll let Andrew get set up here and then we can get into it. Hell yeah. We got all right. Ram. Ram. You know Award Ram, winning. Right? Award winning. <laughs> Award winning. We get to say that now. Yeah. So, um, I guess. I think, I think just to, to jump off, just to say like, you know, there's 145 people watching probably more than that. Thank you to every single one of you for voting. Like, this is not our award. This is your award. Like, this is the community. It's, it's insane. Uh, you know, we, we beat out like 20 plus games there that are massive, like Cocoon and Darkest Dungeon 2. And we met all the devs of those, game, those games, and they're lovely, lovely people. Um, and everyone was super, super uh, welcoming to us. And so, yeah, this is like the community's award. This is totally for everyone out there. And, and thank you for the support. Yeah, did we ever actually mention what award we won? <laughs> I think you might have said it. Yeah, so we won Audience Choice, which was a literal popularity contest. Um, we had sent out those links to vote with your emails, and, and everybody did, which was really cool. Uh, and, you know, I, I in the acceptance speech, which is now on our YouTube channel, if you want to go check that out, um, I, I mentioned that I, I, I'm a full-time software engineering student. I got up in front of all of our classes and uh, put up a QR code and got students to vote. So, in many ways, it is a student award. Um, but... I think, I mean, obviously, we, we would not have won without the YouTube community as well and but the Xylem and ACDS communities, so... Yeah, we were kind Crazy. of in shock, like, because we were saying uh, in our communication previously that we were nominated for Best Student Game, but we think we actually have a better chance of winning Audience Choice, and that was, like, it was kind of copium. We, we didn't think that we had that good of a chance, honestly, but we also knew that unless we pretended that we had a chance, then we really wouldn't have a chance, you know? It's like you have to... You have to manifest it, fake it till you make it. It's like the, the Matrix. He's starting to believe. Yeah, but then when we got there, you, you like the huge um, 
like stage with the with the award show and like we had we'd been talking to and seeing all the other people we were up against like darkest dungeon and like rhythm doctor and people and all these like really amazing games and we we're like we have no chance actually that this was yeah sad. it was kind of <laughs> it was it was humbling and like oh okay yeah no we're just like this little game from from, <laughs> from canada i don't think it's gonna happen yeah so by the time oh. we actually had lost our student game award um, which we were nominated for. We were just like, oh yeah, okay, so we're not going to win anything. That's chill. We don't have to worry about the speech. We can just um, congratulate the winners and get to know all the other devs and it'll be chill. And then they called Ram. And, and we kind of just burst out laughing. I just, yeah, started laughing hysterically because it was like a, it was like the meme became real, basically. It was that kind of energy. But we should start at the beginning. Let's, let's yes. start at the very beginning because this was a whole week for us. Um, I, I took off a week of classes, which is, I now have like a midterms this week I have to study for, so kind of crazy to go back to real life, but um, um, I guess it's known quantity where we're from now, because I set it on a massive stage in front of everybody. Yes, yes we live in Victoria, British Columbia, which is a beautiful city on the west coast of Canada. It's like Vancouver, but it's not Vancouver. Yeah, it's not Vancouver. It's it's. I've lived in Vancouver as well, which is a lovely place. I, I think I prefer Victoria, but um, there's, there's, no, uh, there's no actual... Um, contest there but uh, so we have to do this little tiny hop over onto into Vancouver it's like a 20 minute plane ride not even 10 minutes um, so we, we got up very early in the morning for for some of us it, well, was, early, it was still early for me but <laughs> I'm used to waking up at like noon so it was it was I had three and a half hours of sleep I think at this point yeah and um, so we, we got to the airport we got through the security we got to the, our gate and we're sitting there and just kind of like, okay, okay, this will be cool. And then a couple people walk by and they sit down on the seats across from us and they're wearing a tunic shirt. And we're like, oh, awesome. Yeah, we love tunic. I are like you guys going to GDC? Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, we are. Yeah, okay, yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah, we're the devs of uh, Chicory, a colorful tale, which is, <laughs> you know, a Finji published really cool indie game. Yeah, it was and, fucking uh, Greg Lobanov. Um, and I didn't know who that was at the time. And like, I missed the part where they actually said what games they'd worked on. Um, and it was like, so I was like frazzled at that point. I was really sleepy and I was like struggling to make conversation. It probably came off as really awkward, but like that, it was just like a microcosm of the event. Like even in the fucking airport terminal, the first person we see by accident is like a big game dev who's worked with like Lena Rain and stuff. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. And they were super nice. They actually, uh, they had their steam deck with them and they played, uh, they played Ram <laughs> at the, on the airport. Like, oh, this is really cool. Um, yeah. And then we were pretty sure we we didn't realize how many amazing amazing developers live in Vancouver because yeah. we were chatting with with um, Greg and it was like oh yeah like, you know Dan Daniel Mullins the inscription guy's there and then we looked across the airport and we're pretty sure that we saw him as well with his family yeah he was just looming over. in the distance and we were like ah I said him which was really crazy and it then it's silly. like oh yeah you know like the the Celeste guys and oh yeah and then, you know Clay and. Oh, Red Hook, and it's like, oh my god, okay, all these studios, like, this is crazy, hopefully we get to chat with some of them. So, yeah, that was pretty crazy to realize that, you know, a short hop away from us are basically all our favorite game devs, so that was really crazy. Yes. Um, so then we flew to uh, San Francisco, and it was a beautiful sunny day, we came out and kind of were like, okay, let's go to get our passes, go to our booth, we, um... We put some RAM stickers on our booth, which is cool, because, yeah. you know, everyone loves the RAM yeah. stickers. The booths themselves were these very... It was a bit smaller than I was picturing, actually. There were these little single uh, computer stand-up kiosks, and they were double-sided and then, like, a, a big grid. So all of the um, IGF nominees were condensed into this very, like, tight little grid in the floor space, which is cool. Um, yeah. Oh, just sort of for context, Daniel Mullins is um, Inscription. But in also Pony, Pony Island. Island. Mel says yeah. I know him as the Pony Island guy, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, also Vancouver. Um, yeah, love love Vancouver. Uh, so we went to uh, the show floor because we, we had our exhibitor badges so we could get in early. It was kind of like, you know, you get waved through security. It was like, whoa, okay. Yeah, cool. they were still setting up and they had forklifts and it was kind of weird. Liminal, you know, it was really liminal. Yeah, everyone's kind of setting up the booths. So we went there and then we, um, we walked to our hostel, which was about 20 minutes away. So we got to actually walk through some of Hilly... Uh, um, San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Did we meet anyone Jack, famous? Jack, Ask chat. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. We'll, we'll we, get uh, to there. we did. We will get to that. <laughs> We've already talked about meeting the Chicory Dev in the airport. Okay. Do you get the you get the sense of where this is going? Um. So our hostel was actually quite nice. The, the staff was really nice. We put our stuff um 
room and we're like, okay, what now? Uh, and we'd been chatting with um, uh, Wyatt, who's in the chat, I think, uh, not explosive. Mm -hmm. One of the amazing people we met actually at Seattle Indies last year. So um, our, our pre-existing go-to contact, our man. Oh, shout out not explosive. Uh, in the chat, yeah. Oh, oh there um, he is. There he is. So Wyatt's Wyatt became our our point of contact for just all cool things game dev because Wyatt's one of those um, people who knows everybody and everyone knows him and it's this hilarious circle of cool people. Very so, good person to know. <laughs> yeah, he's also like seven feet tall, so you can see. Very him easy to you... find. Oh my. Yeah, God. very easy to find when you get lost at the uh, the game jolt party, which is the first thing oh, that we man. did. <laughs> Yeah, picture, I want you to picture in your head, you know Game Jolt, right? It's where they host the fucking, like, FNAF fan games. It's where they hosted the Undertale fan game that I worked on in 2016. And, like, what would an industry party by them be like? <laughs> we were trying to picture this on the way over. And it ended so, up being kind of like we pictured. the worst. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it was okay. I mean, I'm sure the people who were there were, were very excited to be there. I'm not sure why, um, We it were not, not really okay. sure, like, you know... You go to events like this and you just assume, okay, there'll be a kind of parties and networking stuff. And we walked into uh, this, this essentially like a club and it was just super loud and people were like awkwardly trying to show their games while like you couldn't speak to each other and it was just packed. It was shoulder to shoulder, couldn't move, couldn't think, couldn't breathe and uh, they started giving this weird speech. The CEO came on stage and was like, make sure to talk to our sponsors and tell us uh, how cool we were. And we are like, we have to get the fuck out of here. And, um, <laughs> Yeah, so we, we bailed on that. Um, oh, by the way, here's a link if you want it for the uh, acceptance speech. Um, uh, yeah, so <laughs> it was just kind of like, okay, this is bad vibes, let's leave. Um, so we just kind of left, decided to go to bed, get an early start, because we, uh, we had to be up early the next day. We had to be at the show floor an hour early because we... Um, we had a press hour, which ended up not really being that big of a thing. Yeah, but, not many uh, actually made it to us. Um, we were kind of in like the back side of the pavilion. We had a spot on the edge, which was lucky, but it was like the furthest spot from the entrance. It was right in the back, and uh, there just it wasn't too busy in the press hour overall. Talked to like two people maybe. Um. Maybe. Oh, oh yeah, sorry, I was just reading the chat. Uh, yeah, so th then the next morning, uh, woke up in the hostel and uh, my my neck was absolutely fucked. I could barely move my head because I had just slept really poorly and we had someone snoring in our dorm. So just kind of already starting off not in a good yeah, uh, we, energy we headspace. Yeah, both felt pretty terrible that first day for different reasons. I was like, I hadn't recovered from the three and a half hours sleep the previous day, so I was kind of felt dead and zoned out. Um, so we went to we, the the show floor, and the thing that was weird is that there was these people lining up, and we're like, oh, okay, cool. Um, like, this must be where we're going. We need to get get through this line because we need to get down. And people are like, oh, no, it's over here. And then it's over here. And then we were in, in this VIP line. And we're, like, trying to get, get through. And then we That's realized funny. it was for the epic Unreal, like, state of Unreal thing. Yeah, it was so we were nothing to do line. with us at all. It was a different building. Uh, so eventually made our way to the booth. And um, the other devs were there. And people started showing up. And it was like, okay, cool chatted with a couple journalist people but um yeah we, we met with the, the on the other side of our booth was the planetka devs um which were really cool and andrew chatted with them more than i did but mm -hmm. they were lovely yeah apparently the the guy there who i don't think was the the developer it was they had like the name tags on but it was um you're not Moral always support. like staring at people's <laughs> name tags it's kind of awkward but um yeah, they said they were a, a fan of my YouTube channel, actually, which was a really funny introduction. The person, like, right behind our booth. Uh, not even, like, the devlogs, like, the, the uh, Deltarune stuff. It was kind of crazy. So, that was cool. Um, I had fun talking. And then, basically, we just were at the booth for most of the day. Um, it was very similar to when we were at Seattle Indies. It was just a non-stop flow of people and just really cool people, for the most part. Like... Lots of lots of game devs and then lots of student devs that were coming by and we had um, if anyone knows Clay Entertainment they make you know, Don't Starve Together and Oxygen Not Included, mm -hmm. you know the classic Mark of the Ninja. Oh, uh, we yeah, had a lot of their devs come by and they were the absolute loveliest people. 
Shout mm. out to Jesse. Oh yeah, Jesse um, was a real bro. Love Jesse. They were they were so lovely and supportive, and they're also in Vancouver, so that was really really cool. Um, just to kind of start meeting those more local devs. Um, yeah, the... We also chatted with the Cocoon devs, who are also awesome, and I'm a massive massive fan of that game. Like, it basically av avoided me burning out on just games in general because I was kind of feeling a little bit live servers burnout, and I loved it. And so it was really cool to be able to tell the uh, the devs who make these games. I mean. I'm sure you know people who watch Andrew's stuff and are in, in the game dev, you know, enthusiast space. You know, you, you know the names of some of these devs, but it's so cool to actually you know be able to shake their hands and say well, thank you for making this art that is has kind of like affected us. Yeah, that was um, definitely the most fun part of GDC, as well as at, at PAX in the fall. Like, it was just meeting the devs that you recognized and just trying not to fanboy out too much and like you're just getting to talk to them about their stuff it's it really never got old although we were very tired yeah yeah we kind of just like pulled ourselves through the days um but yeah like people were asking if there was like famous people coming up and there, there we, we met some very famous people but it was also just devs who worked on games we loved on just basically you know like someone would come by the booth they're playing the game they have a double fine shirt on you're like oh cool double fine they're like oh yeah i did you know this thing on psycho oh yeah that was that was a crazy anecdote so um people the, often the first reaction to ram is to point out a game that it reminds them of like the body swapping reminds me of this and the weird thing is that it always seems to be a different game like everyone has a different reference that i've never heard of um so this person was um standing talking to me while someone else was playing the game at the booth and they were saying, yeah, this reminds me of a game called Headlander, which came out uh, recently. I don't know if you've heard of it, and I'd never heard of it. Um, and then the guy at the booth turns around and says, yeah, I worked on that. Like, he was a double fine employee. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. It was just a bizarre coincidence. But, oh, hi, Toffee. Hello. Hey, what's up? Glad you caught the stream. Um, but yeah, that was the uh, the environment in there. It was like everyone was some sort of dev. Like... If you if you'd played every game in the world, you could probably everyone you talked to there would be uh, like famous to you in some way. It was kind of nuts. Yeah, it was um, it was very surreal, and everyone was very very positive. Um, <clears throat> I come from the film industry previously. I'd done some. I went to film school and made some short films and stuff, and worked on some sets. I worked on some big movies, like I worked on Deadpool two and stuff. And uh, it was really. Um, it was kind of like, it wasn't ever hostile, but it was definitely like people were did their own thing and weren't really into each other's work. It was more kind of work a day. Uh, and so I was kind of expecting, okay, like, I bet the games industry will be similar. Like, you know, people are just going to do their own thing and not really too worry too much about other people's games. But uh, everyone just loves everyone's stuff. They're all a fan of each other, and it was super positive the whole time. And I had, it was, it was such a lovely thing to have happen. Just everyone is just a fan. It was mm -hmm. really cool. And like they immediately, before we'd even won, this is the first day, this is before the award show, people just treated you like a peer essentially, which I guess we, we are. I mean, I think a lot of people have an imposter syndrome about what yeah, you work on. But it's a bit hard to internalize that, but uh, it, it's definitely true. Like no one seemed like that put out talking to you. It's not like they were eyeing you up to see if you were notable. There was like a genuine element to like, I just want to talk to devs about their stuff. Which... Ixia asks if you have ADHD. I can't confirm that, but I can confirm that I have ADHD. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I don't know is the short answer. I've never been diagnosed. Maybe. Um, I'm uh, not sure. Good question. Funny question. Um, but yeah, so that that was really, really positive. Um, we we talked mm -hmm. to um, the developers of Venba, which if you haven't played, you should absolutely check out. Um, yeah, I need to Toronto. play that one ASAP. They won... Uh, the grand prize, and they also cleaned up at the GDCA awards, and they, they, they were lovely. They were at the game awards too. I first saw them when I was looking for Elden Ring news, <laughs> and I was like, "Wait, oh, these these guys are back here! Holy shit!" Yeah, they yeah. swept the awards. It was kind of crazy. Yeah, they were they were absolutely lovely. Um, you should definitely go check that out. That they they kind of described it in one of their award one of their many award uh, speeches. Like, you know, the kind of genre is games you can play with your mom. So, you know, mm -hmm. maybe do a cool cooking sim with your, your mom. As opposed um, to the but... dad game genre that apparently includes specific drive. <laughs> you should play that with your dad. Like, honestly. Yeah, Andrew's maybe. dad drove us home from the airport yesterday. Thanks to my dad. Um, it would be more of a community-driven thing. Well, it was... Um, GDC is like a conference. Like, PAX was more of a public-facing event where fans of the games would go to meet the devs and this was like by devs for devs energy like almost everyone there was either 
employed in the games industry or a student looking to get employment in the games industry. There was no just uh, fans, so that's the kind of environment it was. Uh, we did not really talk, <clears throat> excuse me, that much to the Rhythm Doctor devs. That was they were on the other side of the pavilion. I tried to go over there a couple times, mm -hmm. um, but they they had a very busy booth the whole time, yeah. similar to us. Like, they were imagine. one of the other, yeah, they were one of the other very popular games at the show. So I'm hoping that we can connect with them at some point. I mean, most people seem pretty open to kind of following up, mm -hmm. uh, but they they actually gave a really really nice speech at the uh, awards show. I if you guys haven't watched the awards. Um, I, we're, we've clipped out our part on our YouTube channel, but you should also check out some of the other stuff because everyone had really, really nice and important things to say in the speeches. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll yeah, get the, to the award show, though. The Rhythm Doctor <laughs> devs specifically said that they'd been on the stage 10 years ago with, like, the same game, <laughs> which was nuts. I, I didn't really know much about Rhythm Doctor's dev cycle before then. Like, I actually didn't think it was an indie game at first. I saw RT gameplay it or something, and I thought it was, like, a Nintendo game. Um, but yeah, apparently they've been like, they've been working on that thing for 10 years, it's crazy. Um, Max Dubstep asks, is this a st uh, stream build or a dev build? This is the current demo on Steam. We did a yes, massive update a few weeks ago. This is the new art, um, courtesy of the amazing pen USB mic. Mm -hmm. Um, oh. so, yeah, if you can play this right now on Steam, it's a lot smoother, we've fixed a lot of bugs. It was really, really fun to watch people play it and not have it crash or bug out or anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, we're, we're still on day one. We're still on day one. So, uh, another really cool person that we met and, and came by the booth was a few weeks ago, or maybe a month or two ago, um, a guy named Kevin from Power Up Audio who worked yeah, on like, every cool game you've ever played. Like Celeste, Tunic and Nick, Celeste, et cetera. And... Yes. Yeah, uh, so he came by the booth, but he had previously streamed RAM, and he had given really, like, harsh but good constructive feedback, and I really, really liked the stream, because he's, you know, talking about all the different things we could improve, and a lot of people play the game and just say, oh yeah, it's really fun, but I, I really like when people have, you know, problems with it, so we can actually fix those things. Uh, and so he came by, and he was just one of the absolutely loveliest, most supportive people we, we met there. He came by every day. Um, hmm. And uh, just a, just an awesome person. So yeah, the shout power out to guys were great. Yeah, yeah. All all of those guys were awesome. Um, and then, you know, just another anecdote about how how funny it was. I play uh, Walkabout Mini Golf VR, which is like a cool VR game. I play that with some friends. And you know, walking around, a guy comes by the booth wearing a badge that has Mighty Coconut on it, and I was just like, oh wow, you work on this amazing VR game that I play. And it was just that was the tone of the whole the whole week was just. You know, you any weird little wow. game you've played on, you're just like, wow, cool, I love your game. <laughs> it was really weird. Um, yeah. I bet you, uh, <laughs> I bet you people are going to get tired of the same anecdote of like, oh yeah, we met this person and That's, they were It's cool. a broken record uh, kind <laughs> of stream because it was a broken record kind of week. It was just like, and we met this person and we met this person and this person. It was just like, it happening. I warned you about GDC, bro. Yeah. It happening. I will, I do have a funny story though, which was, well, you know, we tried to give each other breaks as best we could because we we were both at the booth and uh, we wanted to try and you know give ourselves a little bit of a rest, get some food. So we'd kind of spell each other off. I'd go for an hour, Andrew would go for an hour, and Andrew's at lunch, and these five guys kind of like descended on the booth, and they were all you know they were Spanish speaking and very very like excited and like okay like uh, you know they're speaking to each other and then like the guys like oh, we, oh I'd love to you know we were in M A we, we'd love to buy your guys's company in this game like we think this would be perfect for the blockchain like this is this is totally like we could do web three like we could you know we could do these microtransactions here it'd be amazing and I was like oh man the crypto bros <laughs> the web three bros no it was like a random encounter and so they they came in and I basically like systematically pulled their argument apart trying to like like okay what do you think about this game actually would uh go well on the blockchain like i don't really think Straight that makes up any disco sense disco elysium boss fight occurred yeah and so i just basically you know i told them to, to fuck off without actually telling them that it was really really fun and one of them kind of got it and he was like okay yeah okay we'll, we'll leave this guy alone because i clearly wasn't going to sell them our company so they could branch it onto the browser like just just really really it was a hilarious interaction and it's really funny because in G the GDC show floor, you know, one side is like all the really cool indie games and the alt control games, which we'll get to. Those are amazing. And then the other side is like the like corpo world. It's like Exola <laughs> yeah. it's and like Unreal and 
It's like, damn, like Web all of the integrated meta generative boots. AI by Meta. Yeah, and there's uh, a giant Web3 booth, and everyone hates the Web3 people. Like, like everyone hates the NFT bros. It was really, really funny. Everyone's been accosted by the Web3 bros. So, like, you know, you're literally, you'd walk to the washroom, and there'd be two two guys standing there, like, yeah, are, are we have like a really decentralized, localized community that are really invested in each other? It's like, all right, how many buzzwords can you fit in a. Uh, in one sentence to each other, and they only want to talk to each other, so... And only, Anyways, it, only they really, want to really talk funny. to them is think is more of the point. And then, was that the same day, Andrew, that you you had that person come by the booth who hadn't played a PC game? Yeah, that was day one. Yeah, this guy came down. It was pretty funny. Like, I don't know who he was. He was wearing these, like, small, like, circular sunglasses, like, the can't talk right now, I'm making piss, like that guy. And he sat <laughs> down, and he was like, yeah, yeah, cool, man, cool. And he was like... I had to tell him, like, you press E to advance the text box, and he was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Then he was, like, kind of had his, his pointer finger, like, directly over the E button without putting his hand on the keyboard. Then he gets into the game, and he's like, so, um, like, uh, do I, is it, like, which buttons? And it turns out that he had not played a game on a PC since literally the 90s and couldn't use WASD controls and just left. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> he was, like, he was really enthusiastic about the game, and he was like, yeah, I can't do this, bro, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what a cool guy. Yeah, that was really funny. Um, so yeah, I guess, I mean, the next thing that happened after that was the award show. So we should probably get to that, because that was also a whole crazy thing. Oh yeah, award show is uh, I mean, obviously the craziest thing. We got invited because we were nominated. There's like a VIP reception before the thing. So the, yes. the, if you watch the award show on YouTube, there's like a giant hall with a giant stage at the front, and there's a bunch of circular tables, which is like the VIP area, and then there's like a bunch of audience chairs behind it. Yeah, it was like a, a bullpen. It was like a cordoned off little schmoozing zone. They had us all in at the front. Yeah, so we we got sat at a table with um, the Phenopolis devs. Phenopolis devs and some of the Venba. And the Laundry Bear them. people who they worked on uh, Venba. They were support on Venba, and they, they did the ports for those. And then they've also worked on like Toem and Boyfriend Dungeon and Celeste and stuff. So they, you know, they do a lot of support work, um, and they were they were lovely. So we were kind of at the table with everyone, but really, it's like everyone is there. So we sat down, and Noel Berry, who is one of the Celeste devs, is like right behind us. Yeah, like one of the main so, Celeste people, just standing right there. Yeah. So we grabbed a grabbed a glass of wine and started walking around and chatting yeah. with you know game dev heroes of ours, which was wild and greg yeah. from chicory was also there at the same yeah, table yeah we saw so. greg again from the airport it was like oh yep yep there like hey yeah oh yeah we, <laughs> we were actually real too oh my god um, um and andrew and i have a fun dynamic where i'm sure some of you are like me where i'm almost more of a geek about the game dev industry than the actual games that i play like e3 was always like christmas for me growing up it was like oh who's making what and what devs are working on which thing it was it was always so cool to know about you know Who's on what? I, you know, I'd listen to Beyond or, you know, when, when Kind of Funny was first started off, they had the, the games cast and PS I Love You, you'd learn about all these cool people. And so Andrew doesn't have that context for what who people are, but he knows what they worked on. Yes, um, I, I don't recognize the faces or names basically ever. So it's convenient because I can in introduce Andrew to someone and he doesn't fanboy out. So we're, we're at the show and I'm like, oh my god, that's Mark Cerny. And Mark Cerny, for those that don't know, is like the architect and lead engineer of like the PlayStation consoles. Like he's one of the coolest and smartest people in the room yeah. at any given point. Ancient wizard of like the games industry. Like literally worked at Atari. And so I was like, let's go talk to Mark Cerny. And Andrew's like, okay. You, so you we didn't even say that. Cerny. You just walked up to this sort of like tall dude and I had no idea who it was. And I just kind of fell into line. because like, oh, Toby wants to talk to this man. That's cool. I wonder who he is. And you know, we were chatting with him and he's like, oh yeah, you know, I've been really meaning to play uh, Neon White. Like, oh, and I was like, oh my God, I love Neon White and blah, blah, blah. And, so we had like a really nice chat with him. He was absolutely lovely. Mm -hmm. And um, then actually yesterday we we got a DM from him on Twitter saying congrats, and it was really really nice. Yeah, that was awesome. Time. He so, remembered. He remembered us. He remembered us. Uh, but so basically the whole the whole uh, pre-show was just you know walking around talking to really cool people. I mean the same story we've been already been telling. Yep. We got a picture of but the more. cocoon devs. Uh, being photographed, so you know, worlds within worlds, we pictures got photos within within pictures. Photos. Dude, that was a hilarious bit. So that was that was really funny. We got we got a photo. I don't know even know where those photos are, but hopefully we can get yeah, the. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll get the photo eventually one day. Yeah. Uh, and then the event started, and so we were sat at our table, and um, 
the student games which which award which we were nominated for was up first. So we were like, wow, okay, we're gonna find out right away if we won or not. And uh, they had these giant like teleprompters behind us, and we could just kind of like look over our shoulder and see them. And it actually had the like the a winner, <laughs> the winners. Yeah, you name could get there spoilers for, like, the... if you look. Yeah, down. you could spoil it for yourself. So I just turned around and saw like winner is once upon a jester, and I was like, oh, we lost. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna cheer really loud now because this is we can, look, we can look like we're really supportive. <laughs> yeah, without freaking um, out. So we, we, we lost that one to uh, Once Upon a Jester, who are amazing. They're really, really cool. Yeah, they're some um, of the games that out. I ended up talking to the most. Yeah, they didn't even have a demo on the show floor. It was just the whole game. Uh, actually, they said they had a person on the first day play for two hours straight because there was no cutoff point. It's really funny. But yeah, the, the game, it looks kind of like Night in the Woods, and it's like about um, you do like improv theater shows to progress to the from town to town. And um, I, I want to play it now. It did look very cool. Yeah, hi highly, highly recommend checking it out. Um, they were awesome, and uh, so then the rest of the awards went, and it was you know lots of good speeches and lots of good stuff. And um, then the Phenopolis devs, uh, they won. Uh, I think it was excellence in visual design. Yeah, it was visuals. Um, and so we were at the same table as them, and I kind of Andrew didn't think this, but I kind of just gave up hope because I was like, okay, we're definitely not going to win. They wouldn't put two award winners at the same table. I don't think like that. You know, they'd probably want to spread it out. And uh, or something. Yeah, so I thought, okay, well, I'm just gonna stop looking at the teleprompter and spoiling it for myself. Uh, and then, uh, and then, yeah, they they said Ram, and both of us kind of lost our minds for a moment. Yeah, it was it was kind of like, you know, in the moment before they announce it, you have the thought like, dude, would it would be funny if they said Ram? It'd be, it'd be hilarious. And then they say it, and you're like, well, uh, then I guess I I'll start laughing then, and then I, and I did. That was the only reaction at that point. Yeah, I remember. I just distinctly remember looking at Andrew and just bursting out laughing and just kind of getting up. And then I'm pretty good at uh, public speaking; like I, I do it fairly regularly. But I got up on the stage and I I absolutely blanked. Like mm -hmm. I was like, you know, thank you to the community. And then I just stood to the yeah, side and that wasn't Andrew, rehearsed. No. That wasn't a bit. That was just like we had like we talked a little bit on the plane about what we'd say if he won the student award, but much less about the audience choice because that was sort of the long shot weird one. So we got up there and we're like, oh wait, what was the plan again? And um, so luckily we we managed to cobble it together. At, at the end, I remembered part of the speech we talked about from the other award, and I kind of spliced it in, and it it worked. Yeah, and people seemed to like it. I mean, I I was like at right away like very afterwards very embarrassed like oh man like that was really brutal and then everyone's like oh you guys did so great it was such a funny speech it was so honest and i was like oh, okay and we kept getting told the speech was good and i was like i, I guess it was good i'm not gonna argue with you oh yeah mel the, the speaking of doctors thing it's so out of context if you watch just the clip but the rhythm doctor people watched one right before us so they had been talking about doctors yes so i was like oh speaking of doctors like i'm gonna die i, I didn't even hear that like i i was zonked out of my gourd at that point i was not perceiving my surroundings yeah yeah it was it was fun oh hi brendan thanks for coming by oh brendan um, yo yeah and it, it was so sweet that uh, you know as soon as we got back to the table i mean we should talk about the press thing too but we got back to the table and just seeing the the outpouring of love from everyone was so nice and um we we're, we're part of the <clears throat> actually we met at our uh, the University of Victoria Game Dev Club, that's where we started, and that's where Ram started. But they sent a video of them reacting to us winning because their meeting was the same night as the award yes. show, and it was really sweet to see everyone so excited about it. So shout out to Viva Game Dev Club. Yes, um, that was really cute. But yeah, you go up on stage, and you know, there's the the big blinding lights, and you're like, oh my god, okay, let's say something, and you just think about all the people that you just talked to, like, oh, Mark Cerny's now watching us accept like, this award. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and they whisk you off backstage and um there was like okay yeah we, we here's the here's a box for your award like okay um we have a few journalists on the side they like to yeah ask they, you they literally in. suck you into like a it, it felt like we were getting put on the airport luggage carousel it's like please come with us and you go to this weird dark backstage area there's like a tent set up a automatic photo op they shove you in front of their smile photo table council of elders there's three journalists they all ask you questions one guy was it's like, like steven Totillo and like you know a guy from rock paper shotgun and, and the verge and you're like okay yeah, okay like, please roll a die to determine how many words you will describe your game with and i was like yes and say yes i will do this i was like dissociating and stuff like, what's your favorite robot from fiction <laughs> <Whoa>. metaton <laughs> 
Oh, man. So, and then the, the craziest part, maybe of the whole event, the most like surreal yeah. thing that seems like it's a made up story was we were going walking, back to the. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, we were just walking back through the backstage area and it was like just dark in this kind of fenced off little path. And off to the side, there was just a guy standing there, no one else around. And we approach him. And I was like, Rami? And it was Rami from Flambeer who made Nuclear Throne, which is one of yeah. the massive inspirations of ram it's like the probably main inspiration for the mechanical like combat of ram is nuclear throne and it took me i had to reboot my brain i was like wait that rammy oh and like he was just standing there like uh like the wise sage to meet us backstage and um, he was so nice and he he had some really nice words to say you know we because we were like wow we're such big fans of yours and he's like you know you guys just won someone's gonna say that about your game one day and i was like wow that's really crazy and He's like, yeah, like, you know, send me a line. We should have a chat sometime. And it was like, wow, okay, thank you. And then he ended up going on to give a, a really amazing speech later in the night. Yeah, uh, he was really he's a powerful. really amazing speaker. I think that's um, a lot of what he does these days. He's like a um, spokesperson for game industry initiatives and stuff. So he's really cool. Yeah, that, that was really like an unexpected and, you know, just continuing the surreal moment of like, this seems like it's this weird, unbelievably planned situation. Uh -huh. um, it does sound fake, Xia. Yeah. It does. It felt fake in the time. It was I like, think he this was standing be there because he had that speech coming up. He was just sort of waiting in the wings or something like that. I don't know why he was there. Yeah. So that that was that was really insane. So then we go back, and you know, we're getting fist bumps from Nolberry and, and Greg, and it's <laughs> like, okay, everyone's like stoked about it, and we just kind of are sitting there with our little, you know, bemused faces on our phone, posting about it everywhere, and it was like, okay, cool, cool. Yeah. So then the GDCA awards happen which is like the triple A version. And then, yes. you know, Baldur's Gate 3 won everything. Um, but they gave away a really cool Lifetime Achievement Award. Oh um, yeah. Yeah, randomly Yoko Shimamura was just on stage. I was like, wait, what, They she's here too? Like the Kingdom Hearts composer. She's worked on like every, like all these retro games since the dawn of time. And they just had her there to get like a, a literal Lifetime Achievement Award. So that was kind of yeah. cool. She gave Very a long cool. speech. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, everyone had more amazing speeches about, like, you know, everyone was roasting the industry layoffs or, you know, talk, calling for ceasefires and, you know, yes. really just, like, really poignant and amazing things to be said. Uh, it, like, our speech was definitely on the more, like, oh, my God, and everyone else was, like, I've planned for my moment in the spotlight. There was there was a wide <laughs> range. The, it was on, the Larian devs were funny, like, the Baldur's Gate 3 team, because they kept getting called up, and they're, like... Uh, well, we we weren't we didn't know what we'd win. We didn't really prepare anything. And the um the CEO uh, Sven, right? Yeah, Sven. Yeah. He, he always had these very uh, wise words to pull out. But I think what one of their they got like the design award, and one of their people came up and he's, he had this very flustered <laughs> short speech. It's like, ah, uh, yeah, thanks, thanks, everyone. It was a it's a big honor. <laughs> Like, it, I mean, it's really funny. All those speeches, you you can see like articles being written about them or people talking about them on Reddit because it's like people like, oh, Baldur's Gate 3 CEO says, uh, like, you know, don't be greedy. And it was like, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, that was, um, but, that guy had some bangers off the cuff. Like, just good, don't be an idiot, corpo, egomaniac, please, games industry. It was like, oh, nice. <laughs> Thanks so for saying after, that. After that award show, it just, you know, everyone kind of, mingling afterwards yeah we went up and sh said hi to swen and we're like hey yeah big fans like you know amazing congratulations and he was like oh congratulations and that was really really crazy yeah uh, we met we sven being, with troy baker if you don't know who that is he's the guy in the game awards who wore full plate armor to accept the Baldur's gate 3 award that they won so it was him yeah absolutely crazy john larian <laughs> Uh, yeah, we schmoozed with, like, we said hi to Troy Baker, we chatted, we, we, we hung out with the Once Upon a Jester guys a lot, too. Mm -hmm. um, Alana Pierce uh, hosted the G, uh, GDCA Awards, so we mm -hmm. said hi to her. Again, I didn't know who she was until Toby explained it, but yes. Um, uh, yeah, so that was, that was awesome. Just cool. Uh, and then we went out for, like, some food and a drink. We, we were too tired uh, to do any serious partying in the evenings. It was just like uh, 10 o'clock, leave the bar, go and sleep kind of deal most of the time. Yeah, we had been kind of thinking like, oh man, if we win something, I bet there'll be like an Illuminati, like cool game dev party we'll get invited to, like some yeah. secret behind the curtain thing. And then like, it was like Hideo nothing. Kojima opens up a trap door and there's like uh, the eyes wide shut, like crazy shit happening down there. And just no nothing happened. It was just like, oh, okay, cool. We just... Uh... 
Yep. We just we had say a hi a to, uh, to hung out with our boy Wyatt. <laughs> yep. And Rudolfo, who is one of the desktop explorer devs. Who's, oh yeah, yeah. Awesome that was um, I did that Shout like the Rudolfo. Seattle Indies recap stream. Desktop explorer was kind of my highlight from that whole thing. So yeah, seeing Rudolfo again was cool. Yeah. So that that was just like very surreal. We were just so tired and um, bemused. <laughs> I had to. I we were carrying everything around in a backpack, and the award we have is like a giant glass brick. It's it very like heavy, so it was funny to be like complaining about oh my like my backpack's so heavy with this <laughs> like suffering from heavy success. Heavy is the backpack <laughs> that holds the trophy. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. The so yeah. So, so after that, that's when you kind of we met with the once upon a jester team again because. They were like, oh, you won, congrats. And we're like, hey, you won, congrats. Were you doing anything? No, no. So, like, we, we almost went to get drinks with them. But then they, they, I think their exact words were like, we've decided we have to go and, and meditate on this and be mindful <laughs> for instead of partying it up. Like, they just wanted to go and crash and, like, recuperate from the, the mental shock, I guess. Which was really funny. That's kind of where yeah. we were at, too. Uh, and then we went to bed. And woke up and uh, tried to eat a very quick uh, bagel and coffee in the <laughs> hostel before we went to the thing, and it was very dry and hard to eat. Yeah, like I don't a know lot why of the, I included that, but it was funny. A lot of the game dev people at like everyone in the city, it seemed, were replaced with game dev people for the conference. Like the hostel had five different GDC attendees also there with us, and they they wanted to talk at breakfast, and I was like trying to choke down this bagel as fast as possible while making conversation. It was kind of awkward. Yeah, so uh, the second day was really cool because we had won, and they actually added like a little sticker, like a panel, which Andrew took home, for mm -hmm. the uh, award winners, which was really awesome. So that was pretty cool. Um, and so people came by the booth and stuff. Ixia, the reason I didn't talk about the wine is there wasn't really much to talk about. We barely had a glass because we were worried we, about yeah. if we won. We were <laughs> we trying didn't not get... to get drunk, and I was trying not to get anything stuck in my teeth. They kept offering us th these funny little hors d'oeuvres, and I kept declining. So I was like, I don't want to have like a thing on my face for the speech. Um, yeah, we didn't want. I was really worried, like literally, because we hadn't eaten anything since like you know 11 a.m. or something. And we were running on coffee and, and adrenaline. So I was like, man, if I have more than like two sips of this wine, it's going to be brutal. It's over. Um, yeah. So day two, we tried to be a little bit more flexible with. You know, trying to get away from the booth a little bit, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I had probably my biggest fanboy moment, which was really funny. Like I, I was pretty good about not freaking out too much, but at the Godot booth, they had like a really cool big booth, um, and they featured a lot of really awesome um, games that are made in Godot. I don't know if anyone knows the YouTuber Mrs. Is Is Is, who's an amazing um, content creator and game developer. He was there. You and, can use uh, the Y word. I, I'm here. It's okay, Toby. You can say you. <laughs> He's a YouTuber. Um, and uh, yeah, so I basically was like, "Oh my God, hi! Like, oh, I love your videos." Uh, and awkwardly fanboy. Um, um, oh yeah, but Mel, it was. But, um, oh yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Mel yeah. was asking if I, th I had a thought when we were announced that this would be my base reveal. I honestly, it didn't even cross my mind to the point where. Afterward, uh, Toby asked if like he could post a picture of us, and I was like, "Wait a minute, uh, that got my face." Then he had to remind me, like, "You were just on stage, dude. You gave a speech. <laughs> it's over." So that was funny. I wasn't particularly upset or anything. I just it didn't really cross my mind at the time. Yeah, it was pretty funny. I mean, technically, you had been face revealed, I think. Before yeah, there was like a we did a video late. thing for GDC with my face that just no one saw, and I didn't promote because I kind of didn't want anyone to see it because of that. But <laughs> yeah. it was funny. It's, this is actually the coolest face reveal you could ever have, is like, yeah, we it's won a massive yeah. award. <laughs> um, on stage. So it was really cool to meet the the Godot people, and they, they we had chatted with them briefly the day before, but they were kind of busy, and they had a party that night that you know they were dealing, getting ready for, so we weren't really um, kind of like on their radar, and then when we won, they were like, they didn't know any games that had been nominated were made in Godot, so when we won, they, they were so stoked. So we met with their community manager, and we met with like the the co-founder of Godot came to our booth, and we yeah, chatted with them. And... Literally, John Godot. He announced <laughs> his presence as, "Hey, I'm John Godot." His Banger. name is Remy, which is a lovely, lovely French guy. Um, and you know, I I've always joked that it would be really cool to get Ram as one of the featured like header games on the releases for um, 
the, every snapshot of Godot they release, they have like a header game. And I've always wanted Ram to be on there. And I was like, yeah, it'd be really cool to get Ram. He's like, oh, yeah, we could probably do that in the next release. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Thanks. We're in. That's insane. Um, so they, they were absolutely lovely and super supportive. And we took a picture for them. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, there's some good questions in the chat, actually. Sorry, let me... Um, chat questions. Yeah, Burger Minus, is there anything else you wish you had said in your speech? Other shoutouts. I mean, um, It yeah. would have been nice to cover the usual ground of, like, thanks to our parents and our friends, but, like, it, specifically because, like, the first thing that popped into my head was, like, community, shout out the Discord speedrunners, and then we showed it out literally no one else. So the yeah, contrast was kind, was kind of, of kind weird. Of but also I mean, we, we missed, like, it would have been good to thank the, the mods, like, obviously, like, you know, everyone on the mod team and uh i felt bad we missed out blue who's blue is a, one of the our, oh our true true as well yeah. blue is an early we were, i think we were thinking of just runner. like the speed running side of things which i guess you know blue does as well but it was just like in the moment like andrew just had those names on tongue ready to go at the top yeah. of mind so it was kind of like okay uh i wish we'd thanked you know i also said like you know the other game shout out to the other games mm -hmm. Um, I don't we were, think there was much else we wanted to say. There was like really tough competition that year. We kept hearing that and we could see that. And that's why we felt it was so hopeless to actually win once we arrived. Because just seeing all the other people and like, well, look, these games are crazy. And I wanted to play them. Like just seeing them uh, montage through during the nominations made me want Andrew to play Andrew should have games. finished with um, Azzy Pants OTP. That would have been really funny. Oh God. <laughs> okay, I... I almost said this, but I didn't. Um, I was going to thank Toby Fox for setting up his fan base that I could poach all of our fans from. Because, like, <coughs> literally we did. I, I just, like, imported a bunch of Undertale fans to be Ram fans, and it worked. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty funny. Mm -hmm. I think I think watching it back, I I'm, I'm, I'm can do it without cringing, and it was like, okay. Yeah, like, like yeah, it was okay. When you're put on the spot, like, yeah, it's you can't remember everything. You just sort of have to do your best. Um, so then, what else happened? Okay, so, the next day was nice because we had seen everybody's games at the award show, and we kind of had seen who'd won, and we could chat with everybody, and everyone knew who we were because we'd been on the stage. So we chatted with, like, Lee Williams, who is the writer of Crypt Master, which is coming out in May. So oh yeah, he was gave a really funny speech, and he was very fun to talk to. Although I kept Just missing him, like, both times I went to the booth to talk to him after, the first time, um... I got deflected into talking to one of the Valheim devs, which is like, whoa, that's cool, I played Valheim, sweet. And then Lee ran off to a meeting, and uh, the second time I got there and he, he he greeted me and sat me down to play the game, and he said, like, oh, sorry, I have to go to a meeting, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be right back. And then he just kind of runs off, and I was like, oh, <laughs> too bad. But I, I ended up having a really nice chat with him, he was just, just a lovely, everyone was such lovely human beings, it was really, really cool, so positive. Mm -hmm. um, we also chatted with um, the Red Hook guys, so they make Darkest Dungeon. Yep. Uh, they came. They came over and were, were obviously like super supportive. And you know, they're they're also based in Vancouver. So we basically have an open invite to meet any, go tour any uh, Vancouver studio that we want, which would be really cool. Yeah, like literally all of them just kept inviting us to uh, their their meetups they have. So we had like an individual invitation for every studio in Vancouver to go to the shared Vancouver studio meetup. It was getting almost comical at the end. It was awesome. Um. Oh, hey, Connor. Hello. Yo, what's up? Welcome. Uh, so, yeah, okay. There was a lot of other cool stuff that was happening on day two because just people would come by and uh, congratulate us. And the funny thing is you just don't know who anyone is, but they're all somebody. You know, you're looking at their... Everyone has these big GDC passes that say which company they're from. So it's like, oh, you're, you work for Sony. Oh, you yeah. work for Microsoft. So you get like, the surreptitious side eye to their badge and try not to look like you're staring at it too much. Yeah, it was it was pretty funny. So I, I I've been playing um, Last Epoch recently, which is a new ARPG that came out, and playing that almost every evening. And uh, we're at the booth, and a guy comes around the corner. He's wearing a Last Epoch hat. I'm like, oh, I love that game. And I looked at his badge, and he was from Eleventh Hour Games, who make that game. And I freaked out and was like, oh my god, I love your game. I play it every night. <laughs> and you know, had a really really nice chat uh, with him, and, and it was really cool because he was the producer on the game, so I got to ask some questions about that because I'm the producer on Ram. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess I, I, I have a note. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, well, like, I'm trying to think. I didn't meet anyone there who was, like, developed games that I was currently obsessed with. That's kind of a difference. Like, I'm not really currently obsessed with, with any games. The closest I got was probably talking to Rami about Nuclear Throne because that is still a game that I play pretty regularly. 
You were happy with the Valheim thing too, I think. Oh yeah, the Valheim that was cool because that was like for a while. That was um, me and my high school buddies. That was just our multiplayer hangout game back when it first came out. So I was like, oh yeah, dude, that's so cool. Uh, we we met a guy. This is this is I think on day one actually. We met a guy who he's someone in the game industry. I don't know, but he pe seemed to know people. But he was talking about um, he was there the year that Undertale won best our audience choice and. Toby Fox wasn't there to receive it, so he ended up taking the uh, audience choice banner off of the thing and mailing it to Toby Fox. <laughs> and I was like, "Have you met Toby Fox?" And he's like, "No, no, I don't. Only ever talked to him through email." But like, like even to this person who sent him this thing, he's a mysterious figure. That's so funny because like that would have been a good few months after Undertale came out, so we would have known that it was absurdly successful, and Toby just, I guess, didn't go. But uh, yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, Toby Fox was the winner of the award that we won in 2016 <laughs> like undertale won the award it's that goofy he would have been present if he was there not physically he would have been at that same plaza probably that we were standing at <laughs> yeah so crazy bit of a flex. uh i have a i'm gonna run the washroom really quick but i i have a a note in our notes that says got to bring up homestuck so i'm gonna leave you to chat about that while i, I run for a second oh hell yeah yeah that was um i believe one of the like a, a student attendee there was a lot of like industry professionals there, then a whole bunch of people who were studying game dev. And one of them, I forget her name, um, she was talking about being a composer in the games industry and trying to like um do like interviews or talk to recruiters and but she was stuck with like the most popular song on her um I forget if it was SoundCloud or Bandcamp or something, was a homestuck remix that she made. <laughs> And it wasn't even very good. And I was like, I instantly empathized because for forever, um, before I started my YouTube channel properly, like the, the most popular video that I had was like a really shitty Megalovania remix from 2016 <laughs> that I've since taken down. Um, so yeah, I, I, I got to talk to Homestuck about one person. Uh, or I got to talk about Homestuck to one person, I mean. It, it was a huge success. Also, the I think she had a very funny story about um, losing a potential job interview to like someone walking into the scene while while talking to a recruiter and mentioning because um, she had brought up this remix being the most popular thing on her socials, and then like her friend walks over and starts talking about Dave Cat or something. Then the recruiter just leaves. I thought that was an awesome story. Hello, I'm back. Yes, did you, you're back. Did you have to bring up Homestuck? That was the that was the end of the story. You're just in time. Excellent for you. timing. <laughs> um, so that day continued, and then at the very end of the day, <clears throat> towards the end, um, we had two people come by the booth almost simultaneously, which was insane. So, uh, I turned my head, and there was Shuhei Yoshida, who is the head of the Sony's Indies Initiative, like PlayStation Indies, um, and also used to be the head of their global studios. And if anyone was a fan of like you know beyond or kind of funny back in the day that that was a very common name to see so i kind of freaked out <clears throat> and went over and said hi to shuhei and uh he gave me his card and we chatted and he looked at our game and said it looked really cool so that was really really crazy and at the exact same time swen from uh larian also came by and uh you know watched the game being played and compliment he's like wow it looks really polished this looks great yeah like congrats again like and, super, like yeah super friendly <laughs> Toby had to do both of these himself because I was occupied talking to someone else at the time and I didn't even notice this was happening. <laughs> it was quite funny. But it was also lucky because um, I didn't recognize Shuhei, understand his significance. Yeah, that was really crazy. Oh yeah, Mel, so at, oh yeah, I saw Nahu earlier ask about if anyone commented on the music. It was a really unfortunate uh, booth setup because it was like this like really crappy headphones that were like tied into the booth. So a lot of people didn't play with audio. They just like kept the headphones off so they could chat with us while they were playing. But there were definitely people who had the, when they did sit down when we weren't directly at the booth, that were absolutely jamming out to the music. It was hilarious. Mm -hmm. Head was really um, so we didn't get a specific like, oh man, the music's amazing. Although everyone who listened to it has said it's amazing, but we, we did see positive reactions to it. And then also apparently, um, Andrew, no, you know who that was person was. I sent the link to Nahu. Someone um, watched. Uh, oh like yeah, fucking video. Marco Meatball. I hope everyone knows Marco Meatball. I think I've talked about him on stream. He's one of those like music reaction channels who I I saw him like talk about Elden Ring stuff. But he was doing a live stream and talked about the fucking Ram boss theme. 
<laughs> someone recommended you listen to it. I, I've, I've lost that clip, actually. I want to watch the full clip. But um, it was really funny. He was like, oh, yeah, I fuck with this. I fuck with that. He was, like, really into it. Yeah, that was really sick. So there, that was kind of like the, the synchronicity music vibes. People, people love the music. Mm -hmm. I would say the music is probably one of the best things about Ram. It's so. very good, which it's, uh, I think it's just very quiet, or have I had it muted, actually? Oh, no, I had it I, muted. I have the stream muted, so I don't know. Devastating. Um, I'm sorry, now. I'll, I'll turn it back on. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. So then <clears throat> we were, there was the, uh, the Try Again team was uh, next to us, uh, and they were, they were all kind of like, I think student devs that have all found jobs since releasing their very short, cool little... Uh, experimental project, which uh -huh. is, I think it's free on Steam. Try again. Yeah, it's, about it's a like game. a short Go free ahead. game. Yeah, I think it's about like a game dev, like a, a character who's the game dev is like the boss changing things. I don't know. It looked yeah. kind of like uh, Inside. Yeah, it's. I didn't say this because obviously I didn't say this to them, but it reminded me a lot of Ink Sands, the concept of like an a, an unfinished creation and being left to wander that as like an inhabitant of the world. It was that kind of premise. So it looked interesting. Uh, and then so they were like, "Oh my God, that's H Bomber guy sitting at that booth." Over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this whole. And part. I looked at it and I was like, "I don't think that's H Bomber guy. Kind of looks Just... like him." Because we had heard that he was around. He was at a party, yeah. and one of the clay guys had chatted with him. So I was like, "Oh, okay, cool." Like H Bomber guy. And then weirdly, like 15 minutes later, H Bomber guy actually was there. Yeah. But he was like far away on the other side of the pavilion wearing this bright green jacket. It was like his doppelganger just appeared beforehand to, to shake us up, and then the real guy appeared a second later. And I had the most surreal thing where I, we were chatting with someone, and I was like, oh, I think H-Bomber is over there. And then he was at the other side of the pavilion on a booth, and I was kind of looking over that direction, and he did that, like, it's almost like a meme, like, you know, like, the guy who pops up from behind the tree and then pops back? I, I don't know if that makes sense, but anyways, he just kind of like leaned over, made direct eye contact with me, and leaned back, and then did not come for <laughs> Yeah, he like immediately just... left, and then the show ended after that. Yeah, so that was just like really, really odd, um, but really, really funny. Yeah. So I know, may maybe we'll get to talk to Harry at some point. One day. Uh, because yeah, apparently he's into game dev stuff. We talked to a lot of people actually who referenced H Bomber guy and like the plagiarism video, and it's like, hope he doesn't show up. He's gonna, I'm gonna plagiarize something in my conversation. Haha. <laughs> it was like, it was a weirdly common thing on people's minds. I guess that video really was universal. Uh, so, so the one, I mean, we still have another day to go through, but there was one thing that we hadn't. Um, we didn't get to meet any of the super giant like uh, Hades devs, which is one of the people that we really wanted to meet. Obviously, because Hades is, other than Nuclear Throne, probably the biggest RAM inspiration. So yes. it was kind of funny. We didn't get to meet them. Because they're sound based, right? Yeah, I have a note that says failed to find LGTS devs. Little goody two shoes. Oh yeah, that oh, was. Oh um, right. Okay. M yeah, Mel, um, who's in chat has often asked me to, to play Little Goody Two Shoes on stream, and I was considering it. I might still play it on stream. Um, but they had a, a booth like at the pavilion with us. They were one of the um, IGF nominees, so I'm like, hell yeah, I can talk to their devs and say that I'm going to stream their game. But they weren't actually there, it seemed. I never saw them present, so that was just kind of sad. Could have been a funny uh, moment. And so the GDC takes place um, at the Moscon or Moscone Center in San Francisco, and there's mm -hmm. this giant garden near that. They're like the Buena Nueva Gardens. And they're beautiful, they're places to sit. Yeah, they um, long. And you just kind of hang out, and all of the indie devs go and hang out outside and just kind of chat. So we went out for a break. We had some food, and we were going to get some sunshine. And uh, we just, Noel Berry was sitting there with another one of the devs on uh, Earthblade, who's named Chevy. One of the main and, Celeste uh, devs, if you don't know. Uh, Maddie yeah, wasn't there, so, Noel was. So we just sat and chatted with, with them for a while and talked about engine stuff, and it was like... You know, very surreal. Yeah, that, kinda... that was a chill conversation because we were talking like shop mostly, and I was like, I was legitimately interested in finding out more about Earthblade because that looks like a really cool project, and like, it has some parallels with games that I've always wanted to make. This kind of like platforming centric, uh, Metroidvania esque thing, but I didn't want to like, you know, make him give a spiel. Or I didn't want to be annoying about it. So, it was just a fun conversation. So that that was just like a really cool. You know, a follow up on having met him the night before, and then you know, we, I wouldn't say we're we're peers with them, but you know, you can start to spend time with these people yes. that kind of had been holding up on a bit they, of a platform. They like, would talk to us, <laughs> is the point. 
Yeah, and then uh, that evening we hung out with uh, Wyatt, uh, not explosive, who's was kind of like our main friend during the whole show. Yeah, we we Put hooked up with our Wyatt. like our main little crew, which was Wyatt, and then um, Jose and was it Chris from Mega? Yeah, Jose and Chris from Mega Crit. They work on. Uh, well, they didn't work on Slay the Spire, but they're working on the next game. Um, yeah, their studio worked on Slay the Spire, so that's so all the context they were we need. Absolutely lovely. Mm. Um, we went to we went to a bar with them, and that was when we reala really realized how expensive San Francisco was oh because God, yeah. uh, we we didn't want to drink anyways because we had to be up again tomorrow um, or the next day for more show floor stuff. So we we're like, okay, we're not going to drink; we're just going to have water. But all the drinks at this tiki bar that we went to were like seventeen dollars American. <laughs> so it was like Whoa. really insanely expensive. That's the price of RAM. <laughs> yeah, for real. So that was just like a really funny thing. But we had a, a lovely chat with them. Met some more Seattle devs there too, um, and then continued to try to find sleep and have another another day of it. Mm -hmm. um, and so the last day was it was a bit of a shorter day. It was a bit of a more chill day because. Uh, it was the, the show floor only went till three. Everyone else, you know, everyone's kind of burnt out by that point because GDC technically started uh, on I think like on Sunday or Monday, and we only got there on Tuesday evening. So people have been kind of going the whole week. So it was a yeah. really nice time on Friday just to have like more kind of more subdued, chill conversations. Really. Um, but yeah, so Friday morning, um, Remy came over. So that was um, we, we mentioned it earlier, but um, one of the co-founders of. Godot Godot and, and W4 engine. Games. And he introduced himself as John Godot, which was really funny. He might be watching right now. He retweeted the tweet I put out about um, the GDC recap. So, Remy, if you're watching, thanks again Make for yourself chatting known. with us. Please, show yourself. Um, which was really, really cool because, I mean, we love Godot. We, we use it for, for RAM, obviously. Yeah, that was something uh, we noticed, actually, was that... Um... Every every time someone asked what engine we use and they mentioned Godot, they were like, "Oh yeah, cool!" It was never. Everyone seemed to know it and think it was just like we were cool for using it. It's universally positive. We got some cool Godot pins, and uh, yeah, we had we had a really lovely time chatting with um, him. And, and we went we went over to their booth and got a photo that was on social media, which was cool. Um, and uh, we had, there was a guy there who we we chatted with who was worked at Pokemon Company, which was really cool, and it was really funny because we had a really nice chat with him at the very end. He was like, oh yeah, like, you know, if this doesn't work out, like, let me know. Like, you guys are awesome. We can get a job. And I was like, okay, okay. cool. I mean, that, our future is secure, I suppose. I mean, now that yeah, we have... Yeah, that was such a funny interaction, too, because I just turned around and saw you talking to these three dudes. One of them was Remy, the Godot guy. Um, but the the other two people with him, I just assumed were also Godot developers because of context. But no, like that guy was from the Pokemon company, and he was just standing there like listening to our conversation. <laughs> yeah, a super nice guy. Um, yeah, Pootsy, I'm I'm 27, I'm almost 28, and Andrew is. Don't say it. Oh, it's pointlessly mysterious, Toby. You're not allowed to say that. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I may have, may have <laughs> spoiled it. Anyways, we are we are not old, but older than many. Um, yes. But uh, yeah, that was that was really cool. Uh, I think most of the other stuff we kind of we already kind of discussed as we were going through here. Uh, oh, so and the third day we went to we we really want to try make time to go see some of some of the other games because for those that don't know, every year at GDC they do something called the Alt Control Award, which is basically oh, yeah. like uh, like a really really cool like any games that use alternate control schemes so there was games there that like you would take a a coke bottle and shake it and try and like have it rocket the furthest or um you'd sit on There's a toilet a, and use a plunger to a, learn a wheelchair powered game that kind of thing yeah and so Wacky there were shit. one of a kind awesome really cool game so andrew went over there and he got to spend a bit more time there than i did um and he talked to these guys who made this amazing grapple fishing dx game yeah which I, I, um, the first guy I talked to, I asked if it was inspired by Ultra Kill's fishing minigame, and he didn't know, so we sent his friend over to our booth later, and he says, yes, thank you for noticing that it was inspired by the Ultra Kill fishing minigame, <laughs> that was the reason I made it, which was very vindicating. Um, yeah, they were, they were really chill, they were, um, I think students, like most of those alt control things, I think, tend to be student projects because of how experimental they were. Um, and they also like, recognized us, which was kind of cool. They kept we would walk by the booth, and they were like, "Oh, you guys are on stage, yeah! Like, how's it going? Come by." So yeah, that was, like, that was really weird. After the awards show, there was a big difference in like 
it's not like we were getting sm like people were being snooty before, but like everyone just seemed to just suddenly be saying, "Oh, hey, congrats! I recognize you. You were on stage. Nice speech." And I was just like, "Yeah, okay, thanks. Woo, hi." Um, yeah, and that guy in particular, it, it kind of saying, "I'm like, wait, am I a celebrity now?" Like he was like, "Wow, I'm really excited that you came by. I was hoping to see you." Was, wait, wait, who me? How do you know who I am? I just it was thought very, that was funny. Very surreal. Um, and yeah, we just kept chatting with the other devs and kind of wound down, and then uh, it ended at um, like 3 p.m. that day. So we were like, "Oh, we'll go outside and hang out in the uh, in the gardens." And then at that very moment, it just started pouring with rain. So like, <laughs> yeah, oh, very bad. Okay, time. I guess not. Conference um, is over. And we were so tired, so we decided to just go home. We went and got a bowl of ramen and kind of had a nice kind of just celebration on our own. Just like, wow, what a crazy, crazy. Uh, um, yeah. Week. <laughs> and at that point, our minds and bodies are failing, and we're gaunt and haggard and elderly, and it was just a, we were kind of a mess. Yeah, very, very weird, very wild. Uh, but it continued because then the next day at the the airport, we we ended up bumping into the power up audio guys again. Who, again <laughs> it they wouldn't were, end. Like, Celeste and Tunic and everything. It, was, it became like a meme. It's just like, wait, are they game devs? Are they game devs? They're under my seat. They're hiding behind me. They're like, you got to look over your shoulder. They're gonna be game devs in the room. And there were at the airport. Yeah, and then they introduced us to um, Alan um, Pestaluki, who worked on Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. Yeah, and he, he was a... just randomly there, hadn't talked to him yet until the airport. Yeah. But those Power and Up he... Audio guys, by the way, lovely. yeah, Alan was was cool. But um, the, the Power Up Audio guys did the audio for Tunic, and which was cool because they were wearing a T-shirt with those runes, and I was explaining like I put Easter eggs in my videos, and one of them was literally using those runes. And then Kevin was there, he was like, yeah, I was the guy who proofread the tunic manual to make sure the, the secret runes were written correctly. <laughs> so that was and kind of a crazy He added, like, phonetic connection. ciphers to the audio, too? Like, really crazy... Uh, yeah. Stuff. It, it sounded like he had a pretty active role in some of the the musical uh, crypto cryptography. I don't know how you describe it, but, like, putting weird abstract secrets into tunic's sound design. Like, he was no actively way. composing ideas like that. Kevin that composed a song for Homestuck? That's what? Sick. Which one? Which which fucking one? We gotta, we gotta send him a DM. That's crazy. I, I gotta That's send so him the funny. Gaster video now because he's you like do. he's you a do. weirdo for sure. If he's composed for Homestuck. That's awesome. Um, and yeah, I mean that that kind of sums it up. We were we were basically dead by the time it was over. I I honestly the the morning of the last day I woke up and I was like I just want to go home. Like, even though we were having such a good time, like just kind of felt sick the whole time because it was just yeah. lack of sleep and too much talking. And I was sure that uh, entering that Game Jolt party room instantly gave me COVID. I I'm not sure it did, but that's what it felt like. He made Showtime piano refrain. Oh, I think I, I know Showtime. Hang on. In honor of Kevin, uh, I'm going to perform that real quick. Okay, cool. Because Kevin was such a cool guy. Hang on. Shout out to Kevin. Favorite guy. Okay, ready for brief homestuck. Do it. And then, so we got home last night, and then I had to, you know, send emails to everybody and post on everything because we don't have a social media person right now. So I was every night in my uh, get back to the hostel room and trying to like retweet people and you know put the word out that we won, which was cool, um, and chat to everybody on the Discord server. So that kind of concludes the story of GDC. Uh, I think we'll just take questions now and hang out and chat for a bit. I'm, I'm oh, still. Yeah. We'll get to go, but yeah, I'm sure we missed questions while we were regaling you with the tale of, oh, we met this person, oh, we met that we person. We met this and this and this and this and this. But Everyone yeah, I think, uh, I think it was, I mean, obviously the recognition for the award was huge, but I think the biggest thing for us is that we we really made connections with really important people, like you know the Godot people, the yes. um, 
the people local Victoria. Who are not they, only important, but they actually want to know and meet. <laughs> it's important. Um, are you still tired? Yes. <laughs> My voice is barely holding on. Uh, did any publishers approach you guys after you won? Uh, I don't mm -hmm. think there was any specific publishers. We had one of the guys from Clay Publishing come by, but he wasn't like pitching us on um, publishing the game. It was more like, hey, if you want to talk about it, I'm happy to give advice because we're kind of in a bit of a position of power with that now for negotiating. Yeah. I think a few people kind of said that it's like you know you guys can kind of hold your cards close right now so yeah people who knew what they were doing and weren't just like crypto grifters who could pretty hands off in terms of like we can do this for you you know yeah um um mel um, asked mm -hmm. oh yeah go ahead uh did we get to play any demos at all would they recommend some of the games well mel funny you say that because um not today but maybe uh tomorrow i was planning on doing a, a stream of some of the games that I didn't get to play, and not all of them have public demos. Um, then I'm obviously I'm not going to be able to play them all because there's a billion of them, and some of them are games I wanted to play anyway. But I am going to do a follow up stream where I play some of those. Uh, did you meet any fans from the YouTube or the server? I mean, the Planetka guys. That was the closest thing, right? Uh, yeah. We no, there was one dude who specifically knew me and he wanted the photo. Remember? Oh, like right. Yeah, he worked at um uh. They work on Call of Duty. Uh, oh yeah, that Raven was Software. Raven, Raven, Raven Software. Raven. Yeah, because yeah, cool. you, you like pulled me over and I was like, "There's someone who wants a photo with you, Andrew." I was like, "Okay." Uh, um, did you meet any Ram fans that wasn't a dev? I mean, a lot of people had either heard of the game or played it before, which is cool. And actually, after the award show ended and the after the after part, not what wasn't a party, the kind of after mingling, someone came up and were like, "Oh, I was a judge on you know for the student games. Like, absolutely loved your game. Like, thanks so much." And I was like, "Oh, thank you." And he gave me his card, and it was like that games writer for the new york times so, so i was like oh not... wow okay so i'm hopefully going to email him <laughs> yeah i got really a couple of new york contacts got invited to hang out by this uh this guy jack he was pretty cool showed us to jack uh, how many business cards do we have i um let me count them all i have them right in front of me because I, I was I have emailing about 20 people. probably easy i got rid of some of them because there were some people that was like oh i don't remember who you were Yep, it's inevitable. There was we were trying to make that list in the hostel the last day just because I was already forgetting who we met on the first or even the second days. <laughs> it was this nonstop like queue of people. I'm just counting. Uh, thirty exactly. Let's see Paul Allen's card. <laughs> you know what's funny is one of these business cards actually has a, a American Psycho reference on it. Awesome. And it, it wasn't even a very nice card, which was kind of funny. I won't tell you who it was, but. Uh, very, very funny. Mm -hmm. um, Does that have a watermark? What specifically made you think of Ultra Kill Fishing for that one weird game instead of like Stardew Valley Fishing? Um, it was a PS1 low poly graphics. It looked like Ultra Kill Fishing <laughs> specifically. Did I you also... plan to wear similar shirts to the award show? Nope. <laughs> uh, we weren't. We even they weren't even that similar. The the resolution was kind of low in the footage, but like I had a like a thin plaid stripes, and Toby had dots or something. Yeah, they're a little. little they pink. were both just sort of generically tasteful black dress shirts that we had. Yeah, we looked put together. We looked like we were. We knew what we were doing. <laughs> yeah, I think. I, I immediately after like on Friday, I got like five pimples, but like not before then. It was weird. It was like <laughs> I just had to look pretty for that one week. Yeah, Andrew got a haircut right beforehand. Mm -hmm. Nailed it. I had the little the little curl hanging down. It was. Do you guys know that you looked like an unfused ver version of? Alex Hershoff Gravity Falls fame. Uh, I'm going to look that guy up now. Who is that? Alex. Uh, Alex Hirsch. Honestly, like, it was really funny. Uh, Andrew, I was, I was like, like, wow, Andrew's very photogenic in all the photos we took. I think I looked okay, too, but it was really funny. I was like, damn, okay. Yeah. Hell yeah. We look good. I was looks, happy with it. Alex Hirsch looks very slightly like you, Toby. Not really that much. People were saying I looked like RT Game. I, I don't look like RT Game. That's not real, by the way. Oh yeah, Momo Sweet Peach, congrats on getting Peepus. Oh that was, yeah. Uh, that, that was, was kind of like a through line of while we were at GDC. I was almost more excited that someone finally found it than we won. I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> like we're lot lying was... in lying in the bunk beds in the hostel and from above me I just hear like, Toby, someone got the Peepus. <laughs> yeah, that was on Friday. So it was like the denouement. We were just kind of like recuperating and prepping to go home and I was like, wait, they got it. They got the Peepus. It's real. 
because I was expecting once you found the 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 actual the ciphered notes that it was going to be a whole other like process to find what game it was from. But you just speed ran it, just blasted through it in one day. It was kind of crazy. It's funny because people said that they imagined that you would just be Tesla when you got on stage, and and for the first I think almost year of knowing Andrew, we had never seen each other because we just were in voice calls because it was COVID time. Mm -hmm. And the first time he came over, we had like a game dev meet up at my house, and I I expected Andrew to be Tesla like for real, and I I wasn't sure who Andrew was, and then I finally met him. I was like, oh, cool, hi. Like this, I still think of Andrew as the Tesla face, even though I. You know, we spend so much time together now. It happens. I've said I do the same thing myself. I, I see Tesla and I go, oh, that's me. I just like, it's like looking into a mirror. It's like my face. It just kind of, there's a synapse in my brain that does that now. Our friend sent us an, an image of like a Tesla autobi or like someone's biography of Tesla. And he's like, I thought this is about Andrew for a second. <laughs> well, uh, so, yeah. I, I don't know if you're still in chat, Toffee, but you, you definitely like you didn't know that my profile picture was tesla and you thought that was just a, an old photo of me right when you first <laughs> met me <laughs> yeah that's hilarious i mean yeah i see pickles you probably yeah you you known him before internet fame since the ancient times the old days it was really funny it, it was so i mean we had such an outpouring of love after the win um mm -hmm. i won a bunch of awards at my school for doing the the co-op stuff because I, I worked on the game for school stuff. And I emailed my coordinator saying like, hey, we won, it was great. And then he emailed back saying congrats, but he had been watching the stream and when we lost the student game, he just turned it off. Oh, so he didn't know that we had won. You have little faith. God and damn. he was like, oh, that's awesome. Oh my God. So that was really fun. And I'm, I'm cementing my place as one of the epic alumni of all time. <laughs> yes, I think you're to. already there. It was, um, to, Toby's uh, rather well-known around her school campus i believe it's an interesting question have either of you ever seen any large animals in a place that you shouldn't have seen large animals like near a store or in the gaming conventions well there was a dog at one of the booths for alt control i think it was like a a service dog one at one of those but it was like i thought it was like an animatronic for a sec because i was sort of a place like why the fuck is there a dog there <laughs> but um there's probably a better example than that what was the vibe about the state of the industry? I've heard things about the vibe at GDC this year. Honestly, it was really weird because, I mean, this is our first GDC, so it's hard to know what the previous mm -hmm. has been like, but it was a combination of, like, very exciting to be back in a more, like, post-COVID world. Like, people were very happy to be back, and it was kind of thriving, and mm -hmm. people were excited to see each other. But there was also lots of frustration about the layoffs and stuff and i think we that was mainly more at the award show that you really felt that yeah which that was came up nice a for lot. it i think but that was weird because that was our first gdc ever and when you we were talking to mark cerny i think he was saying like oh yeah it's good to be back this is it's been pretty rough the last few years and like i had no idea i was like wait it's this is it's not always just like this because we had it was seemed to be business as usual but they were that was like the first time they'd come back and then a proper one since COVID. i think right yeah yeah i i mean i think they had had one the year before, the I think, and something, and it was really like a smaller version. It was a lot quieter. So this was like the full first, you know, back in full force. Was anyone cosplaying? I saw one guy dressed like Alex Yeek, but I think he was just dressed like that. I, I didn't want to bring it up. <laughs> what if it was Alex Yeek? Um, didn't, I didn't really see any cosplay at all, actually. It was more of an industry event, so I think that's not really the vibe. But there was some wacky fashion, for sure. Some very interesting fashion. So Toby did not show up. Toby Fox was not there. No, well, I I passed a, a dog that looked a lot like him actually on the street. But oh, I, right, we were gonna try and take a picture of that person's dog. Right. And well, say it, we it crossed my Fox. mind. Then I I'm probably either gonna be like arrested or put in a cringe compilation if I try to accost this woman and get a selfie with her dog. So I, I didn't do that. Uh, we didn't see anyone in Zelda fit. No, uh, we, we, we saw did Zelda see... devs. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We met Nintendo devs. They were there uh, to accept their Tears of the Kingdom awards in that same little VIP area. We we did meet people from ACDS. Shout out to the Planet Cadevs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty crazy. Shoot, I think wow. that's kind of everything. That covers most of it. Yeah, there's inevitably yeah. going to be a bunch of stuff that we just blanked on because so many fucking things happened. Things wouldn't stop happening. Yeah. When do you think we'll see a Ram cosplay? Ah, uh, hopefully soon. I think a Steel Toe cosplay could go hard. I mean, no. you see some V1 cosplays. Yeah. Um. Yeah, hopefully, uh, I think it'll be fun to go back to um, 
GDC and like other events again, not as an exhibitor, because now we know, uh, like you know a lot of people that we can connect with, and we'll be get to you know, get invited to some stuff and and go more as like not having to be at the booth all day and just hang out rather than you know play other games and meet other yeah. devs. I think that'll be really fun. So I think we're looking forward to doing this again. Mm-hmm. Uh, but not as nominees, which was yeah. exciting. We, it was we, amazing. We made so many contacts in this that I think we can now be successfully to show up to some conventions without a, a concrete reason to be there and just like meet up with people. That's kind of what Toby was saying, but that's like the next um, packs, like it's no guarantee that we'll get into Seattle Indies again because they're, they're kind of harsher on repeat games. But even if we don't, we're probably going to go and just like meet people there and, and spend time around and go to like the parties. I genuinely don't know how people do like the whole circuit, though. Um, Dylan Gedig, who's the maker of Peglin, is a, is a friend of ours. And they did like every conference. They did like TGS and Gamescom and, and PAX and like back to back to back. They kind of did mm-hmm. the victory tour for Peglin. And I can't imagine how people like how he survived it because i think like we did like what four days at gdc and i basically i'm gonna need like a week to recover yeah. <laughs> like you, you need to it be was super pretty crazy and some people just are they become machines like they're it's like the the miners and elden ring how their skin just turns to stone and they, their brains turn to crystal over time that's what being a, a gdc regular is like i think oh yeah mel that's right yeah we another fun thing to announce we got nominated for new voices at the london games festival Hell yeah! It's not spoilers. It's awesome. It's really cool. We we can share that now. Um, we uh, they, they posted all the trailers for the games, and I don't know where they got it because we sent in all of the trailer. assets they requested. They sent like the oldest trailer I've, or they they put up the oldest footage of RAM that I've seen. It's like the pre demo trailer. Very unfortunate. But um, we're, we're gonna fix that. Yeah. So um, it's not a big deal. It's just kind of funny. Yeah. But uh, I I talked to their organizer. Un- but we're definitely not yeah, going to not, london <laughs> we're not planning on going to london it's too soon after this it's too much time away too much travel too much exhaustion um but we would like to that, that would have been fun in a, in a slightly different circumstance yeah it's um i think the biggest thing that we got from gdc is just the the like validation of us as a studio um and i think like the fact that basically now anybody that you could think of in games, we could probably get an introduction to and, and be taken somewhat seriously. Mm-hmm. I think that is the biggest success story for us is that, you know, we have a level of, um, you know, a, a level of recognition now that makes it so that we can kind of be peers with people and get, you know, have those conversations. Like, I don't, you know, I don't know if we want to have a publisher or not, but like we can actually have those conversations. So that was really cool. Yeah. Foot in the door. Exactly. Yeah. Foot in the door um, and like, we were talking about like Finji seems really popular. They published uh, Tunic and Chicory, I believe, and they're very uh, highly spoken of. So we're like, oh, yeah. And we we've got some contacts with them. N- nothing concrete okay. yet, but you know, options. Have you any desire, or hopes to do crossovers like Clay has done with Terraria and Cult of the Lamb? I mean, I think we have lots of opportunities for that. I don't know if that'll happen, but I mean, like, think of the Ultra Kill comparisons. It would be really cool to get a sanctioned V1 skin and. And ram not just a mod yeah, if, if we got yeah hakita somehow in contact i have no i'm assuming that hakita is about as reclusive as toby fox i'm not sure if that's true that, that's the impression i get but yeah i think that would be awesome so i think we're definitely on like the we're open to anything side but we just have to kind of <laughs> the funny thing is you know you have that list on wikipedia of like the that insane list that we're on we have big shoes to fill, and we got to make the game now. Like it, it, it's gone from imposter syndrome, and we're like, "Oh man, okay, now we got to live up to, uh, you know, some of the best games ever made." I think we can do it. I don't know. People seem to like it, but it's, it's. Yeah, it's. We're gonna have to kind of buckle down and work. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a, a re, well, not a reality check. It's just a bit intimidating. Um, okay, so Momo suggests that I show off some RAM art before the stream. Yeah, goes. I think that's a really good idea. Absolutely. Um. And I'm assuming most of that is consolidated on the RAM server itself, though I remember some being posted on ACDS. Oh, no, there it is, yeah. Um, I like the um, Deadbolt. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, yeah, the, <laughs> the Deadbolt fan. Yeah. Okay. I mean, well, before we get into the fan art, I just want to reiterate, like, thanks again, everybody, like, yep, you did it, it keeps us going, like, the, the, the chatter in Xylem and ACDS and just, like, the love and the art and it's 
it's uh this award is totally because of everyone so like people people always say that and i'm you know i'm in all these different fan bases that people say like oh thanks for the support and whatever but it, like you know and it, it it's always funny how it comes off as like oh yeah of course they're just saying that but i mean we literally would not have won for uh you voted for him <laughs> yeah you so voted. thank you yeah all right amazing oh yeah i need to ask mel to make me a a, a new pfp because like these are so cute i need a little little toby ram pfp somehow oh yeah so this isn't i'm not sure where to start it's been a while since i showed off ram art uh we have a lot mel it's dumped awesome. a ton of it um this one's pretty old this is by cheats blamesman it's just a cool steel toe oh yeah that one very scary spooky looking and then we get into like 400 mil posts okay that's to mel adorable aphid uh i oh. believe this is um this was art that mel did for nahu like on the um the, on the sound yeah it's the, the ost element, cover which is sick so awesome got that so, so cool. lighting um, another sketch, it's of course Hatsune Miku and a Steel Toe by none other than Mel. Yeah. Uh, oh, Steel Toe Shy. Yes, terrified to meet uh, meet their idol here. Um, uh, lovely, lovely. Another Hatsune Tachi or something. It's, we we have the, the upcoming Saberbot um, <laughs> that's been Tachi. made into Hatsune Miku. That is Adorable. awesome. I love that one. Still, no. oh, I can't wait for everybody. I, I'm really excited. Like the 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 great thing about we're gonna do early access this fall. We'll have a date for you guys at some point. We need to you know mm -hmm. make more of the game before we really confirm anything. But um, this fall, you can look forward to some stuff. But we'll. Uh, I'm really excited to get people's hands on the new characters that like Collider and and Tachi and. Yes. It's nice because you know we can launch into early access and have time to keep building up the game, but still work with everybody to to you know make the changes that everyone wants. Oh, cute steel toe deadlift. Another Mel sketch. Just some piggybacking. It's probably ship art. I don't know. I don't I don't keep track. <laughs> steel lift? This is or dead a toe. Bird 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 has a cute little rotor oh! holding that looks kind of like a Celeste heart actually. Like a you cleared the the seaside heart. That's cool. I don't know if that's intentional, but very cute. We got to get plushies. We got to get a router plushie. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what that will happen was, was running off to when I tried to talk to him. He's like, uh, I have a meeting about plushies. And he has he had to run off to talk. The plush. Crypt Master plushie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the the game's wacky, by the way. Crypt Master. It's like this weird, like, cell shaded, maybe like black and white inscription looking thing where you you type words as your input and like you have to guess words with missing letters and letters drop as loot and it was fucking weird and i enjoyed i'm really that. excited for it i think it'll yeah. be cool honestly like it was it was really wild just like every single game there was so cool something that was really interesting is this year um not the the awards weren't swept by anyone like there wasn't like one you know like venba didn't win all of the prizes every igf award went to someone different so it was really cool there was a lot of different award winners and just positivity around all the different games mm -hmm. worth checking all of them out yeah thorn art yeah, yes this, one, this one's by doc it, we were we were really impressed by this one we saw it when we were down there uh i think there's some wing dings for me to decode of course is there yep oh man it was really <laughs> funny oh yeah that's probably why kevin was so thought it was so funny that you could read wind wing dings if he's got that kind of other background right i guess it's not the exact if same he, thing but... i wonder like yeah what's is he an undertale weirdo i need to know now i gotta find out definitely subscribe need to subscribe to andrew cunningham oh thanks thorn for the show as he pants otp <laughs> yeah yeah it, you should hit that sub like and subscribe wishless ram on steam i've heard the youtube now it makes like the like button glow if you mention liking in a video it's got like that voice detection shit it's got the subscribe button goes all mm -hmm. rainbow colored yeah it automatically i love dispatches. the thorn art yeah we, we had a couple people uh laugh really hard at they very few people got to the shop on the show floor we did a custom demo for the show floor with a very condensed tutorial yeah, it, and was it was two floors shop two floors boss it was very short Oh yeah, we have Deadbolt. This is by Momo, the, the recent Peepus winner. Love that. Absolutely beautiful. Those uh those Kingpin vibes go hard. <laughs> yes, this is the true ideal form of a deadlift. 
Um, what were you saying again? The second. Oh, uh, I was talking about um, what were we talking about? I've lost it. I'm so tired. <laughs> Damn it. We'll come back. Chat will remind me. Another Momo piece. Yeah, we were. This was like a conversation oh, in the server where um, you... I think Momo mistakenly called Deadlift a deadbolt. And then then I, in the airplane, actually, was like, maybe we have a steel toad named Deadbolt who has to keep explaining that they're not a deadlift. So that's what this is referencing. Little router. So cute. Very cute router. Uh, I'm so excited. We, we had so many great conversations, like on the plane and just like when we were hanging out about some of the stuff that in the storylines i'm really excited for everybody to see some of the stuff that we talked about because there's yeah. some really cute um so much stuff. writing to oh do. right <clears throat> the the custom demo oh yeah so yeah. ram is inherently a very difficult game to just pick up and play so people kind of sat down and got bodied pretty hard some people got it and the good news is that it actually looked really nice um mm -hmm. from you know no, no matter if someone was playing good or not or well or not it was it looked really nice with the new art um but a few people made it to the shop. I think one person beat the demo, which was really funny I think because two, two people. Oh, two it. people. Yeah. Hell yeah. But the, there was the there's like a bug in Godot right now where it has like on on export it adds like new lines to text labels. So if you yeah. beat the demo, it was like thanks for playing RAM, like wishlist now, and then everything was just pushed off the screen. Yeah, the QR code was like illegible, so that was funny. Was like if jank. you were one of the two people who beat it, you got to see the biggest bug in the demo. Congrats. And, but we got to complain about that funny. bug to the Godot developers while we were there in person. That was awesome. Yeah, hopefully it'll get fixed soon. Very exciting. Uh, so that that was um, it was really nice to see people being able to like pick it up and play it. But um, we had a few people get to the shop, and we had the dialogue from the shop in there where it blocks the UI, and it's quite a long bit. Like it, it kind of goes. People are trying to buy stuff they're not understanding, but watching people get there, like oh shit, I'm blocking the UI and moving it, and just seeing them laugh out loud was like yes, like that is awesome. Yes, it was very vindicating to see people actually enjoying the dialogue. A few people were confused, but I, I left I let them cook for a while to see, like, I kept my mouth shut until they actually got to the end, and a few of them laughed, so that was cool. This is this is Mel uh, shit post. Uh, love it. We, we love, love it. to see it. Uh, oh, and the, the, yeah, this is the recent, the most recent Momo Sweet Peach drawing. <laughs> I like this one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the jacked rotor. Oh my god. That's what's inside the box. That rider is so cute on the top left. Really adorable, yeah. That that's the last piece of art. But... Is there any art in ACDS? Um oh yeah, I think I, I it was all reposted. I remember some Momo stuff over there, but I think it also appeared in Xylem. Uh, I'll check quickly. But there's a lot of arts and crafts stuff to scroll through. Maybe in the awesome. RAM channel actually. Yeah, there's the the jacked uh rotor awesome i think that's it yeah i think that's all of it yeah the ram community the r community the best i mean we literally won <laughs> we beat everyone because we have the most passionate fan base so cool literally, objectively it was hilarious how people were like yeah i can't believe like this best student game won the uh, audience choice that's so cool we we agree we're not people, sure how it we're happened. coming by like oh yeah people said we should play rhythm doctor ram and and uh, crypt master it's like oh hell yeah like yeah. so cool yeah and uh and like the ram team it was so cool it was nice to be able to shout everybody out like people were like oh who made the music who made the art like oh dome keeper art that's so cool so mm -hmm. yeah like we we obviously share this with the whole team even though we were the two on the stage yep um we just did yeah. the programming super super surreal so i think that about sums it up anyone have any last minute questions uh-huh most good looking youtube moderator yes out and yes <laughs> <laughs> That one goes to oh, JD, man. I think, though. Yeah, hopefully. I don't know if JD's seen the the shadow yet. Yeah, it seems like JD's um, been in the in the void of work recently. He's very busy or something. Monster Hunter when? When I finish my midterms. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Did I make Undertale? No, I wish. It would be cool, but no. Um, Gaster Cannon to the Ram universe? I can't confirm no. or deny. No, no, no. We, I, I don't want that fucking guy in my game getting out. <laughs> He's not allowed. Um... You now then, sleep for eighteen hours. I did last night. I could uh, I could mention that I'm going to be working on a new video soon. Ooh, that's sort right. Of, that's sort of the next task. We the cheapest like, freed you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. After the San Francisco trip, I was going to get back into video production, so my channel doesn't fucking die. Uh, oops, sorry about that. Last major video essay was like a year ago. 
Um, so <laughs> yeah, the, the actual, the idea that I had to do as a short project, first and foremost, which I think will be legitimately short, uh, was about Outer Wilds, not Undertale. Um, and it's, it's not going to be a generic, well, not that I d dislike videos that are just ranting about how good Outer Wilds is, but it's a very specific thing that I've always kind of had a, almost a pet peeve about, or that's, uh, that I've been curious about in Outer Wilds and I want to like look into that. So I think that's what I'm going to be doing next. I'm very excited for it. I actually haven't, uh, beat the DLC yet. So that, that might happen before <laughs> I play any more Monster Hunter. Everyone has to beat Outer Wilds now. Yeah, it's so good. We didn't meet the Andrew Outer Wilds devs, so no, we'll have to uh, meet them next time. They weren't there. Um, didn't. Yeah, there there was a few people that would have been cool to meet. Obviously, like uh, Alex Beach from Outer Wilds dev, Andrew Shouldis, I think, is the tunic I dev. I think we have a connection there. to him now. That would be it would be cool. That. Yeah, to somehow get in touch. And uh, and Lena Rain wasn't there, unfortunately. Yeah, it's it's such a good game. Outer Wilds is so fun. It's yeah. amazing. Um, yeah, uh, thank you so much for stopping by the stream and uh, all the support and, uh, wishlist Ram on steam, obviously mm -hmm. it's going to mm -hmm. be really funny to see how many people wishlisted over the oh, course last week. Still? I know I checked, we got like, like between 60 and 80 a day for the last few days. So like a few hundred people, which is cool. That's probably how many visited the booth. <laughs> yeah, definitely not like 5,000 or anything crazy, but you know, it's what still you'd expect very from happy. like an in-person event. Yeah. Right. What are you planning to do next for Ram? We're going to early access this fall, so yeah, working on some fun stuff. Working yeah. on, uh, I'll I'll drop a little fun little hint here because I said on the show floor, working on multiplayer. Yes. So, uh that that's will... a little a pet project that I think Toby and Lee are going to tackle at some point is getting some yeah. sort of janky Ram co-op mode up and running. Yeah, um, and so that'll be sick. The main tasks, of course, are adding in the the hub world and getting the other levels together like the art and the uh yeah, even more enemies so yeah that's the plan We're, uh it's gonna be it'll be fun we'll get there um yeah look forward to it i'm to quote reggie uh, i gotta go back to playing animal crossing new leaf on my new nintendo 3ds you gotta go back to playing last epoch no honestly i gotta go study i have a i have an ethics and computing midterm on Wednesday that I haven't studied for. I gotta go do that. That's fucked up. Um, <laughs> I gotta go figure out what I gotta do now. That, that's my I gotta go start writing a script. I gotta finish emailing all these 30 business cards I have. Yep. Yeah. It's fucked up. Our lives it's suck. It's awesome. Um, but yes, thank you so much for, for tuning in and hearing about our, our wacky, whimsical San Francisco adventure. Um, yeah. And much love, everybody. Tune in I'll, I'll announce it in the server like tomorrow or the next day for like some I'll, I'll be streaming some of the games there that I didn't get to play so that'll be fun it'll be a bit of a longer stream uh, and until then thank you and uh, see you next time bye guys